Good Sunday morning, everyone. It's Joe. It is Sunday, February the 13th. I welcome you to my scripture reflection for this Super Bowl Sunday. Yes, it's Super Bowl day, and almost everybody knows that, whether you like football or don't. And I just urge you to enjoy the game as entertainment. Just, you know, whatever you're going to do, uh, just enjoy it. Try to have a peace in your heart type mentality, regardless of whether your team wins or not. Be practical about it, and, and it'll be that much more meaningful. After all, life is precious. Today, three years have gone by. Three years ago today, my baby girl, as I call her, Shelby Dwyer, went to heaven. And I remember very well sitting down only a few days before she died was Super Bowl Sunday. And I was just watching the game and just enjoying every little moment about it. Just the things that didn't seem to matter, you know. So just keep that in mind today. And I would ask for your prayers for us as uh, today is a difficult day thinking about my Shelby. But I'm going to ask you more so to quiet your minds and hearts because we have a gospel message to read and then think about. It is from St. Luke chapter 6, verses 17 and 20 to 26. Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a stretch of level ground with a great crowd of his disciples and a large number of the people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon. And raising his eyes toward his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are now hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude and insult you and denounce your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice and leap for joy on that day. Behold, your reward will be great in heaven, for their ancestors treated the prophets in the same way. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are filled now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will grieve and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for their ancestors treated the false prophets in this way. Oftentimes, with all good intentions, we are told, oh, you're blessed. I was just told that yesterday when I posted a picture of my grandchildren. You are very blessed. True, but. We're also told we're blessed if we have a successful career or a happy life or a good relationship. True, but. We're also told we're blessed if we're financially wealthy or we are able to take a trip or whatever the case may be. True, but. I say but because, my friends, Jesus is not referring to any of those things. Even the things we think are pure, like our relationships, like our loved ones, that is not what makes us blessed in the way he describes it in the Gospel of Luke today. I'd like you to consider something. When you pour water into a tea kettle and you boil the water so much so that all of the water is evaporated, it is now seemingly gone, but it's not gone. It's never gone. It's in the atmosphere as, you know, condensed water or something that we can't see anymore, but it's still there. It's still there. And in all honesty, there's many of these things that evaporate that are in our environment that are there and they're still very powerful. They can be very powerful in many ways. Now, why is this guy taking me on a chemistry lesson? I'm not taking you back to my chemistry days. I really am not because I forget more than I remember. But I'm telling you this because something that's there that we don't realize is sometimes the most powerful. And in fact, what Jesus is talking about in the way we're blessed is by having a peaceful, mindful approach to our life. It's that inner calmness and that soul of strength that we have in all situations whether things are difficult, whether things are contentious and people maybe are criticizing us, and that calmness and that little bit of inside mindfulness that can't be seen. It's not a child. It's not a person. It's not a gift. 
It's something we can't see, but it's something very powerful that only comes from God's peace within us. And that is what Jesus is alluding to as he says, blessed are you and lists all those things. How do we obtain this? Well, we obtain this through meditation and prayer and you know, maybe reaching out to somebody who maybe can help us with this. But I'll tell you who helped me the most is the one that I think about today, Shelby. You see, she had that no matter what. People mistook it for, you know, things that about her, they were like, oh, I don't know. She's awful quiet. That's a little bit concerning. Or, oh, she looks a little concerned or scared and she was going on therapy visits. No, it was that inner strength, that inner calm, that mindfulness and godness within her that couldn't be seen. But that was her blessedness. And she shared it with many. And I would submit to you that if we could acquire this, and we can, then we could share it with many too. And an attitude will absolutely get out there that will make a difference in the world. Well, my friends, I hope this was helpful for you today. If it was, please share it on your page. Please let me know what your thoughts are on my reflections. I love to do them, and I'm looking to expand them in ways, and I'm going to be thinking about that over the next week or two. I wish you all a wonderful Sunday. Enjoy the game. Please continue to follow me at joedwyerjr.com and I will see you back here soon. Take care, everyone.